Uh, in the last few minutes, we've heard from European uh, Union President Donald Tusk that the EU will agree to a so-called flex tension until January the 31st. Uh, as usual, we need the advice of our assistant political editor, Norman Smith at Westminster, to understand what this means. Norman, explain this flex, flex tension to us. Well, what it means, first off, is that Boris Johnson's do-or-die pledge to leave by October the 31st is no more. It is dead, it is over, it is finished, it is not going to happen. That is off the table. So that is the first domestic political consequence of the EU decision. And what they've done is agree to the extension which Mr Johnson set out in that letter, which he said was from Parliament, but which he was forced and obliged to write as Prime Minister, seeking a delay to Brexit until January the 31st. Now, the EU have incorporated into that what's called a flex tension. In other words, different break points when the EU could leave on November the 31st, December the 31st or January the 31st if we get a deal ahead of then. To be honest, I think there was always a calculation that that would be uh, allowed anyway without the EU formally setting out those bench park uh, moments. But it does now mean that to many, no deal will have been taken off the table at least until January the 31st, which will increase the arguments in the Commons that with no deal parked at least until January the 31st, Parliament now has to make a decision on an election. And that is what Boris Johnson will be trying to argue today and over the immediate days ahead as he tries to secure this general election ahead of Christmas. And as he tries, obviously, to, to control the narrative, because coming back to the first point you were made, I mean, he did say he was going to do or die in ditch, and there were all these w dire warnings from, from the hard Brexiteers about what awful chaos would ensue if we didn't get out of the EU by the 31st of October and so on. I mean, how are they all going to kind of back out of that? I suspect what you'll hear from them is what we've already heard, which is Boris Johnson did his best, but was thwarted by... Parliament. The question is, how do voters read that? Do they think, well, this is a man who said he was going to do this and hasn't done it? In other words, whether he is punished, particularly, I suspect, by the Brexit party, he will say, well, look, you can't trust Boris Johnson, just like Theresa May, who promised we'll be out on March 31st. He promised we'll be out on October the 31st. And just like Theresa May, he hasn't got his deal and he hasn't got us out. The other possibility is that voters are more sympathetic towards Boris Johnson because he has, as we know, tried all sorts of mechanisms to force Parliament to make a, a decision ahead of 31st. Maybe they take a more charitable view that he's done his best, but it is a risk. And the risk of calling a general election, if he manages to call one without Brexit being resolved, is he is punished for not resolving Brexit. So, in a way, yes, you know, it buys more time, but it also creates an element of uncertainty for Boris Johnson because he now campaigns for a general election in the knowledge that he has failed in his signature policy when he stood for the Tory leadership. Norman, much more from you later for now. Thanks so much.